In a physics lab, you take lots of measurements. For example, suppose you measured the diameter and circumference of many circles. If you collected these values in a table, you could use them to calculate the number pi based on the formula for circumference. Ideally, all these values of pi should come out the same, but because no measurement is perfect, the values will all come out slightly different. A little knowledge of statistics can help you turn these values into one final answer. You can think of these values visually. Here, each dot represents one of our calculated values of pi. In a good experiment, most of these values will form a cluster near the real value, with a few values being farther out than others. At this point, we can use two basic concepts from statistics to help us, the average and the standard deviation. When we talk about an average, we're taking all the values we found in the experiment and reducing them down to one value that sits roughly in the middle of all the measurements. When we talk about a standard deviation, we're describing how spread out the measurements are. A very narrow range of measurements will have a low standard deviation, and a very broad range of measurements will have a high standard deviation. A low standard deviation is a good sign that our experiment is likely working well. Calculating an average is fairly easy. You add together all of the measured values and divide by the number of measured values. Calculating standard deviation is a little more tedious. First, you take every measured value and square it. Then you take the average of these squared values. Then you take the square of the original average value. Although these two numbers have similar names, they're almost always not the same. Then you subtract the average of the squares minus the square of the average and take the square root of this number. All this number crunching is quite tedious and gives you many opportunities to make a mistake. That's why we'll look at how we can use a computer code to handle all this arithmetic. The first step is to type your data values in a format called a list. Lists are a wonderful resource in Python. To tell Python that you're creating a list, you begin and end the list with square brackets. Then you type the items in the list separated by commas. In this case, the items in our list are the values of pi from our experiment earlier. A list can have any number of items in it, you just need to separate the items with commas. Just like with single numbers, you can save a list under a name. We're calling our list data to remind us that it contains the data from our experiment. Now comes the easy part. This code includes a function called average which will calculate the average of the numbers in our list. We just need to type average and then place the name of our list in parentheses. This notation works just like functions in your mathematics class where you write f of x using parentheses. We have another function called stdev that will calculate the standard deviation of the numbers in our list. If we run the code, we see that we get a pretty good average for pi compared with the known value, and we have a number for our standard deviation. Now remember, we want to check whether the standard deviation is large or small to evaluate the quality of our experiment. One way to check on this is to compare the size of the standard deviation with the size of the average. We can do this by calculating the percent deviation, where we divide the standard deviation by the average. Multiplying by 100 turns this fraction into a percentage, and we see that our percent deviation is actually pretty small. You have now learned how to enter data values in a list to calculate the values average and standard deviation. The activities in the link below will help you learn how to use these functions in the context of various physics experiments. Before we go, let's take a look at how these average and standard deviation functions work in our code. The average function uses a for loop to cycle through each item in the input list. This loop will repeat for every item in the input list and perform the same two operations. First, the loop adds the current value to the calculation of the total. Second, the loop increases its count of the number of values in the list. After exiting the loop, the code calculates the average as the total of the values divided by the number of values. The standard deviation function first calculates the square of each value in the list. Then it uses the average function above to calculate the average of the squared values. Finally, it applies the standard deviation formula. I hope you can agree that this is a lot easier than calculating all these numbers by hand.